What's up DJ Tech Tools, Angel here. Today I have a quick video for you guys to show you how to map the MIDI features inside of Tractor using the Pioneer DJM 900 Nexus. Now a lot of you guys are already running into the 900 Nexus in the club, so this will be a really great way for you to learn how to take advantage of the onboard MIDI features. That way you can use this mixer as an additional controller during your live sets. All right, so for those of us already using Tractor with the 900, we're not going to have to do anything special here. We're already taking advantage of the onboard sound card, so we got our USB cable plugged in, and that's it. We're ready to go. That same USB is going to send our audio signal as well as our MIDI signal. So other than that, pretty much everything here on the 900 can be mapped to MIDI. Out of 79 buttons, knobs, switches, and faders on the 900, only five of them don't send a MIDI signal. So you have a lot of room to get really creative depending on your configuration and how many channels you like to use when you're coming up with mappings for the 900. All right, so let's go ahead and get the 900 set to send a MIDI signal. Uh, all we need to do is head right above the effects panel right here where it says MIDI and hit the on off button. So when that lights on, the 900 is sending a MIDI signal and we're all set to go. So heading on over into Tractor, what we'll want to do first is open the preference tab and head down to the controller manager tab and we'll want to go to add and click generic MIDI and select the DJM 900 Nexus as our port. So now one thing you'll notice is that it doesn't actually give you the option to send MIDI out. Uh, the 900 Nexus is not built with the capability of accepting MIDI out signals. So you can't change the settings or uh, features of each individual knob or button. You pretty much are stuck with what is native to it. I'm just thinking we're just gonna play around here. I'm The way I have my mixer set up is I use the first three channels. I have deck A, deck B, and deck C and D routed to deck channel three. And channel four is actually routed inside of Tractor to record out. So none of these things have any purpose as far as function goes for the mixer itself. So I can actually assign the various things here to do for MIDI. So I don't know, we're just gonna go ahead and make a effects chain and play around with that. So let's start off with our fader. Our fader, we're go let's map that to our effects channel. And we're going to head down to effects and we're going to use that as a wet dry. So we'll hit learn, turn our fader up and that's it. So we want the type of controller set the fader knob and interaction mode as direct. And of course our effect channel to two. So now this little button down here, this little switch, this actually is mappable. So I'm thinking it might be cool. We can make that play with the loop size. So we'll want to head down to deck command, go to loop loop size selector, learn, and there we go. So we got learn, make sure that we assign that to deck A. And here, type of controller again, fader knob, interaction mode, we actually wanna change this to relative. And we'll come back to this and I'll explain why in a little bit. But let's go ahead and keep mapping all of our stuff here in Tractor. I'm gonna slide this over a little bit. All right. So now let's make the effects unit turn on. So we're gonna use this Q button for deck A to be the on off toggle button for our effects panel for deck A. So we'll wanna head to effects unit, unit on, hit learn and we're gonna hit Q and that's it. So now with our buttons here, because the 900 already has it built in where it's set to toggle, we can't set it to toggle inside of Tractor, but we want it to set hold. All right, so now we need to actually turn on the effects deck. So we want to go to mixer and actually set effects unit on. So we're gonna set that also for effects channel one, and we're gonna put that Q button again. And again, button, interaction mode, hold, sign that to deck A. So cool, there we go. So now we're turning the wet dry on effects, effects panel one and we're turning on that effect for deck A. All right, awesome. So I'm gonna use, just to make this simple, I'm gonna use the macro effects available inside of Tractor. So all we're gonna need to do is use the third knob here. So I'm gonna map 
the deck four's color channel knob here to manipulate that third channel. So we'll head back in here and we're gonna go and to FX unit and we're gonna click on knob three, learn. And there we go. So now we got that. Make sure it's set the fader knob in direct and on unit one. All right, cool. So there we go. So now we have this ready to go. We're gonna have this be our knob control. You can see that moving. This is gonna control our wet dry. Our Q button's gonna turn that effect channel on and off. So I don't know, let's play with one more thing. One of the mappings, I'll actually include a link to it uh, that I use, it's my two channel performance mapping that I've made for the 900. I actually set these two color effects to control the key adjust. So what I do though, is I use this link cue, which has no purpose uh, on the mixer since I'm not using CDJs, is I use that as a toggle or a modifier. So let's make that first modifier in here. Let's go ahead, modifier number one learn we'll hit the link button and there we go so i'm gonna make sure that set the button and hold and we'll adjust the value to one and there we go cool so that should be our shift that's gonna be our shift button now so now let's map our cue so we want to go down here deck deck a uh, key adjust in our deck setting we'll hit learn and we'll set that and again, fader knob, direct mode, assign that to deck A, and we wanna make sure that the modifier is set to one, so that way it, it only turned on when we have this link button engaged. So there you go, you can see the deck channel one is being controlled, so cool. And then when I turn it off, it doesn't do anything. Awesome. All right, great. So now let's head back to our loop size selector. So again, this is going to be controlling our loop size selector for deck A. Now what we have are three different positions. So we have a position over, the middle position, and then the far left position, center, left, right. Okay. So to be able to manipulate that though, we're going to have to play with the rotary sensitivity. Another thing is whatever loop that this was left on is gonna be what it's gonna be. So if you have it left over onto the right position and you have it set to eight loops, um, when you move it over to the middle, it's gonna slide over thinking that one to the left is to the left and vice versa. So we want to make sure that we have our starting point as a middle. So we can use four or eight count loop. And that way when we, hit this sucker to the right or to the left, we're actually getting some kind of adjustment here. So here we go, we're gonna go to this loop selector and I've already played with this a couple times. So we're gonna have to head down to like 15, 20, 25% to actually get it to do something that's worth our time. So we'll put that to 20%. So again, we're gonna settle this somewhere in the middle. So four or eight counts, we'll start at four. And if we move it over to the right, goes a 32 count loop. Go to the center, it's four. And we'll get a half count loop we slide it over to the left. So I like that, that sounds cool. And then we can also play with it on eight counts, but you can see that it's set to 20%. It just kind of wants to bounce between those three. So, so that should be I have a loop ready to go on deck A. We have our loop adjust down here, go 32 or four or half a count loop. Got our wet dry on off for our effect. And we have that knob three inside of our effects panel control. And then of course over here we got our key in key lock engaged. So now I can adjust the key on deck A. And yeah, that's about it. And I may even play with one of the native native effects at the same time. So who knows? So let's goof off. Let's see what happens. We're gonna fire this up and see what we get.
So there you go, a really quick introduction using and mapping the MIDI features on the DJM 900, and really making this mixer an even more powerful tool in our DJ setup. Now, if Pioneer were to ever decide to make an updated version of the 900, what I'd really like to see them make available to us, other than the MIDI in and MIDI out feature, is make a controller editor like we have for a lot of our native instrument controllers, as well as all the other controllers available to us on the market. And that way, we could go inside and change the individual functions of each knob and button or switch, in MIDI mode, as well as possibly even change the LED colors that we have on our mixer. Now that being said, the 900 is hands down my favorite mixer. I take it with me everywhere. It's been industry standard for several years now, and it's probably going to be for several more to come. Now over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be really experimenting and playing around with different settings, as well as MIDI features, and see how far I can push this mixer to make some really unique and creative mappings to make the 900 Nexus even more versatile in the DJ booth. I hope you liked this video. Put any questions or comments you have below and make sure to check out djtechtool.com for more videos. For DJ Tech Tools, I'm Angel. We'll see you next time.